Hello and welcome. This is a guide about the basics of aircraft carriers in World of Warships. If you are an experienced carrier player, then there isn't much in this video for you. But if you haven't played carriers before and want to learn, then this could be a decent place to start. So, the outline of this video is the following. First the introduction, then we'll talk briefly about the interface and controls, then some general carrier strategy, how to adjust the angle of attack, how to do manual torpedo bombing, how to stack planes efficiently, what kind of commander skills should you get, what kind of module upgrades should you get, and finally I'd like to know why do you even want to play carriers, let me know. The interface for carriers is a bit different than other ships. It is a zoomed out top down view. It's not quite as zoomed out as the map view, but it's close enough. What you can see is that under the one key you have the carrier itself. Under the other keys there are the various planes. Fighters, whose main, op main job is to fight other aircraft, torpedo bombers, the main bread and butter damage dealers of carriers and the RNG fest that is the dive bombers. Next to them you have this, these little numbers which are your hangar capacity, how many of each of these planes you have left. So if some of my fighters got shot down and my fighter group came back to the carrier, this number would diminish and my fighter group planes would replenish. If the planes in the hangar run out, then you run out of planes. Well, one of the ways to make planes take off is to select them with one of the number keys, two, and press the F key. For the F key makes them take off and land. The other way to take them off is to select a group and click somewhere to move. You can steer the carrier the same way you steer other ships, but you can also set waypoints like this. Autopilot. Essentially, it's the autopilot. You can queue them, same goes for planes. You can also select multiple groups at the same time and do that. Now, another key that you're, is going to be really useful is the left alt key. This enables you to do manual torpedo and dive bomber attacks. Looks like this. It means that you can torpedo bomb water. You don't have to click on an enemy to do so. You can also queue planes take taking off. To cancel a takeoff order that's in queue, you right click on it. Like this. And now this group does not take off. The general carrier strategy is to attack enemy carriers and battleships. Use your torpedo bombers to deal damage and cause flooding on a target. Wait until they use their repair and then 20 seconds later attack them with dive bombers to set them on fire. Make sure to do manual torpedo bomber drops because they are less likely to be avoided. The reason you have to wait for 20 seconds is that damage control party lasts for 20 seconds on battleships during which time they can't be set on fire or be flooded. Use your fighters to engage enemy torpedo and dive bombers if they have a carrier. If they do not, then use your fighters to clear out cruiser and battleship launched fighters. If your fighters aren't strong enough to kill enemy planes, then wait until the enemy plane is near friendly anti-air fire and then attack. Fighters attacking an air group will cause them to slow down and panic. Be careful when attacking cruisers or near cruisers. Cruisers have an ability that will cause panic on your planes when it is activated. When that happens, pull your planes back and either go for a different target elsewhere or wait 40 seconds until the ability wears off and attack again. And again, learn to do manual torpedo bomber drops. An automatic attack works like this. You select a plane or planes by dragging a box around them and you click to attack. Now they have an attack order on this ranger here. This indicates where the attack vector is, where the planes are 
and you can make the angle different by dragging this around. You click and hold down and drag this. And that's where the plane will attack from. Manual torpedo bomber dropping is the most essential skill you have to learn when playing a carrier. What you do is fly towards a ship from the side, hold down the ALT key and set an attack run so the torpedoes land in the water, arm and then hit the ship. Now let's break down what happens in this attack. The planes are headed towards the carrier. They are going to be given the attack command. Right now you can notice that on the plane itself there is this triangle. This shows the heading or direction the planes are moving in. This and the angle of attack cannot be too different because then the planes cannot turn properly and start doing these weird circles to try to reposition. In a manual attack they are most likely going to miss because your target usually will have moved on. Now, next, what's on the screen? The white circle around it, that's where you have to lock in the attack. If the plane passes that point after you have selected to attack, then the attack is locked in, you cannot do anything to it anymore. The next, the start of the green bar, that is where the torpedoes hit the water. A bit after that, a bit in front of the ship in fact, which isn't actually visible, but it's this line, is the arming distance. That's where the torpedoes arm. And then at the end, the other green bar, that's where the torpedoes stop going forwards. Group five, returning to ship. Let's take a look at the US carrier doing a similar drop because the torpedo spread is a bit different. Stacking planes is a good way to have your planes take less damage from anti-air because your attack is concentrated into a small time span and while one air group is tanking the damage the others are not getting damaged. However stacking might not always work out right. Often it's fine but there are times when you try to stack and the planes just won't go together. It gets more difficult the more groups you want to try to stack. So. What you want to do is to select all the planes you're trying to stack and try to move them into one location that's decently far away. Try to set the waypoint in a place where all the planes arrive more or less at the same time. If you have more than two groups that you want to stack and they aren't very well placed then you might want to try to stack two of them first and then stack the third with the other two, then the fourth, etc. I would recommend the following commander skill build. On tier 1, basics of survivability. Flooding and fire damage is the most dangerous type of damage you will be taking from other carriers. So this will help you survive against them by quite a lot. On tier 2, I would recommend torpedo armament expertise. Tor it will only lower torpedo bomber service time by a few seconds, but it is the most useful skill on tier 2. On tier 3, on Japanese carriers, I would recommend dogfighting expert. On US carriers I would recommend it as well, except on the midway. On the midway this skill might not be that useful because your fighters are the fastest in the game and I don't know if this skill works for them in any useful way. On tier 4 I would recommend aircraft servicing expert. It increases aircraft survivability and lower servicing time. It is also the most useful skill for a carrier. On tier 5 I would recommend the most powerful aircraft carrier skill air supremacy. It adds one fighter and one dive bomber to your air, air groups. Then after that I would recommend the next three points go into damage control party. This increase, this lowers the reload time on it which also saves you from fire and flooding damage and makes you survive for longer. And if 19 points is possible I would recommend getting situational awareness. This helps you against destroyers. Even if you cannot see them, 
this skill will pop up and tell you that you are spotted by something. And if you cannot see anything around you, then you are spotted by a destroyer and you will be able to react sooner than you would without it. On aircraft carrier module upgrades, I would recommend the following. Although, a note first, on lower tier carriers you will not have all of these upgrade slots available, so ignore the ones you do not have, get the rest of them. On the first slot, I would recommend the airgroups modification one, because this is the only one that increases your planes in any useful way. On slot two, I would recommend flight control module one. This lowers your servicing time. The second option would be air groups modification 2 which would increase your fighter survivability which might be useful in certain situations but I do not use that. In the third slot I would recommend the air groups modification 3 which increases your torpedo and dive bomber survivability. You could get flight control modification 2 which increases the aircraft maximum speed but I have found it to be less useful. Also, they are both pretty expensive. In the first defensive slot, I would recommend Damage Control System Modification 1, because it lowers your chance of fire and flooding. You might just get lucky, but this isn't a big deal, really. In the second defensive slot, I would recommend Damage Control System Modification 2, because this is similar to the Commander skill. It lowers the fire and flooding damage you will take. This can save you many times. And in the last defensive slot, this is also rather unimportant, I would recommend getting Concealment System Modification 1, because you have no need for target acquisition. But this is also kind of unimportant, so if you're poor you can easily skip it, that's not a big deal. Thanks to Sharana for his useful carrier guide, and thanks to iChase for his manual torpedo bomber video. Also, I will most likely make another video which will outline advanced carrier maneuvers to help those that already know how to play carriers. Most of them are very cheesy. Now, I would like to know something from you. Why do you want to play carriers? For me, I started out playing carriers because at the time there was a lot of drama surrounding the aim assist mod. I didn't want to have to deal with any of it and I found carriers one class that has nothing to do with artillery aiming. So I looked up iChase's manual torpedo bombing video and went from there. So how did you get interested in playing carriers? Leave your answer in the comments. And remember, if you liked the video, then subscribe and thanks for watching.